Hey, what's going on guys? Mr. Chuckles here, and today about some gameplay for you guys on Burning Shrine, game number two that I was talking about. The one that's more objective focused, and the one that we do really well together as a team. So, I unfortunately I don't have the very, very beginning of this game, but at the beginning of this clip, you'll see that we actually just captured B, and there's less than 2,000 points on, and there's less than 40 seconds into the game, which means that we've captured this zone extremely early on, which is exactly what you want to do. No matter what map you're playing, B is usually a zone that you're going to want to have. Almost always. Simply because it is in the middle, and it offers you a lot of different angles and just a power position, having that close zone to you, and that zone in the middle. If you capture early on, usually B has multiple angles that can be attacked from, no matter what map you're playing, and so it's really good to just capture it early. Now, here's what I want to talk about, though. You can either capture it, if you're playing solo, it's usually good to capture it. If you're playing as a fire team of six, or if you're a very, very skilled individual, and you have, if you're confident in your ability to outplay the enemy team, you can use the zone as bait to get kills. However, that can just be done in control. What I really want to talk about though is zone control specifically and the new game mode that's coming out in Taken King and how I think p players need to practice in control and get ready for that mode. A lot of players that play control are so one focused. Let's get kills, let's capture, and not think about everything in between. So what are the steps for capturing an objective? And this could be anything from a zone to ammo. And in this new game mode, kills won't mean squad. They don't give you points. But you're still going to have to kill people in order to get the objectives you want. So, step one, figure out what objective are you going to take. Or what objective do you want. Step two, how are you going to achieve this? What methods, what resources do you have that are going to help you be able to get this? Whether you need some shotgun or sniper ammo, whether you have heavy ammo, whether you have a super. Once you have that established, then you need to figure out, okay, what angles can this objective be attacked from? What are my threats right now? Because you can't just walk over to a zone and expect to take an objective for free. It's usually not going to work that way. Usually somebody is going to contest it with something, and you need to be ready for that. So once you figure that out, check all your sight lines, clear off the enemy. You have to kill people before you take the zone. That is really important and really crucial. And in this zone, or this game, you'll see I'm playing solo, but the majority of my team are all moving as a unit. We're all kind of sticking to the outside. We're all sticking to... We're never pushing past a certain point for the most part. We've held down A, we've held down B, and we refuse to give those two areas up. And as soon as we see that somebody is capturing it, we all together work as a team and rush towards it, and we utilize our resources for that. So in this new game mode, that where you don't get kills, the biggest thing I think players are going to need to work on is visualizing and understanding threats. So right here you'll see, okay, heavy ammo just spawned, right? This is obviously control, but it's the same idea. This guy... If I, since I killed him, it's going to give me zero points in this new game mode. But he was a threat to our objectives, so we need to kill him. Same idea here. Players make the mistake of being super, super, insanely, overly aggressive. I'm an aggressive player, but I understand that once I have an objective, I have zero need to push and to run into them and just get all up in their face. Even if I have heavy ammo, right here, I shoot, I shoot this guy, I back off. Why? Because I have no need to go to C right now. Zero need whatsoever. I have A, and I have B. And if I push, there's a good chance I am giving up my power position. Once I have both objectives, or once you're on a team that has both objectives, or whatever objective you want, you need to defend that objective. Get your weapons ready, set up, and just defend. Do not push, no matter what type of weapon you're using. Here's why. Here's a great example in the new game mode. If you get, let's say, two objectives on lockdown, and I don't know how points are going to be earned in this new game mode, whether it's going to be points based off of every time you capture a zone, or what I think it's going to be is points of every time, or how long you hold. I think the longer you hold it, the probably more points you're going to get. If that's how it's going to be, then what point do you have to push? Control is the same idea. Yes, you get points for kills, but there's really no reason to push once you have the objective that you want. I mean, if anybody could think of a reason, please let me know. But oftentimes, it's better to let them come to you. We have A, B now, right? So, I am letting them run to us. We're sitting back. Our snipers are ready. Our scout rifles are ready. Our shotguns. People are crouching around the corner, waiting for them to walk around the corner. There's literally no benefit to, for me to push a C. The only thing that I'm going to be causing is negative consequences. I'm either going to get killed like that guy right there, get shot in the sh face with the shotgun, or I'm going to be flipping the spawns, and I will be getting my teammates killed. Right where I'm at, there is not a reason to push past that. People need to realize that. Once you have zones, don't push. You're going to be ruining the game for the entire rest of your team and for yourself. If you want to improve your KD, you want to improve your streaks, you want to get better at the Crucible, you have to understand there's a point of where you need to stop pushing and let the enemy team come to you. Because these guys right here are running blindly to B. 
Remember I told you to use B as bait earlier? Well, that's what we're doing. These guys are just jumping over, trying to neutralize us. Well, guess what? We're not going to be sitting on that, contesting it. We're going to be sitting back with our guns ready, watching them on B and trying to kill them before they get to it. And that's what we're doing here. Now, finally, they're getting a chance to be able to neutralize it. Simply because it's burning shrine, the wheel is spinning. So then you're going to see me work my way back outside. Really, you just got to learn to adjust and work around the map. Never, ever, ever push. I, I want to stress that enough. If you guys have the objectives, stop pushing. Stop playing the extremely aggressive game thinking you're going to be getting more kills. I'm sliding with a shotgun right now, and yes, it's a shotgun and it's strong, whatever. But you don't see me rushing into their zone. I'm letting them come to me, and I'm still utilizing the shotgun very effectively. And had this guy not fist to have it me right here, I probably could have just picked up an extra five, maybe eight kills. Because I could have shotgunned that guy next to him and stole the, he uh, stole the heavy ammo. But unfortunately, we ended up flipping the spawns there, which is kind of crappy. But other than that one move this whole game where they flip spawns on us, we really held down the AB zone extremely well. And there was no need for us to push. The only reason we flipped is because their entire team pushed basically out. And my whole team pushed inwards. So uh, that's what I want you guys to take away from this. Realize that just because it's an objective game, once you have two objectives, stop pushing that third objective. You don't need it. Figure out which zone's better and how you know what zone is better. It's because it has better angles, better positioning, offers you good resources, and lots of escapes. The C zone really doesn't have that. I'm kind of stuck to two small little corridors or by a pillar in the middle with an explosive box that can get attacked from like four or five different angles. That's terrible. I don't want that. I want to be outside where I have the freedom to work around and to where I can pick up heavy ammo and have a huge position on the enemy team. I have a gigantic elevation position. I can look down on them while they're capturing B. Right here, if they throw a grenade, we're all dead. While they're sniping, they have the sun as a huge advantage. So figure out what angles offer you good positions, figure out what objectives are good, capture those objectives, and then stop playing super aggressive. Alright guys, that's pretty much it. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you're all having an awesome day, and I'll see you later.